morning. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. I'm John. I'm one of the pastors at North Park, and I'm excited today to be sharing with you some thoughts from our Monday devotional that comes out of Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 15. Since this is our first study in the book of Mark, I thought I'd give you a couple of thoughts about the book overall that I think will be helpful to you as you begin to read it and study it. First thing is, who is Mark? Uh, we believe Mark is John Mark, who was a colleague of both Paul and Peter, and you can read about him in different places in the book of Acts. Uh, sources tell us that he was a secretary or translator, if you will, for the apostle Peter, who was one of the 12 disciples. One source, in fact, tells us that Mark wrote accurately all that Peter remembered. And so what we have in the book of Mark, as with so many of the biblical accounts, is an eyewitness account from Peter and from Mark, who also was there for some of it, but Peter primarily. Secondly, when we think about the book of Mark, we should notice the style in which it's written. It is written in the present tense. Uh, the term immediately or at once is noted 40 times in the book. It's a book of action, one of urgency. I just recently watched a war movie that was unique in the way that it was made as there was only one scene where there was a cut, a break in the action, and that was right in the middle of the movie. And what it provided was a very intense viewing experience because it just went from one scene to the next without any break. Similarly, if you were to sit and read the book of Mark from beginning to end, I think that's how you would feel. It's breathtaking. It just moves from one event to the next. It's a book of action. There's not much of Jesus teaching in the book of Mark, but there's a lot of his doing. And so it's more an account of his life. So this morning, as you would read verses 1 through 15, you would notice there are four introductory scenes within those verses. In verses 1 through 8, you have John the baptizer. And he is baptizing Jesus as a fulfillment of the prophecies from the book of Isaiah. So this isn't something new, this good news, totally separate from the rest of the biblical story. There's a longer view as Jesus and who he is ties back to the Old Testament. In verses 9 through 11, Jesus is being baptized. And there we see Jesus. We see the Spirit who's in the form of a dove. And then we have God the Father who speaks. And he speaks that this is Jesus, his Son, whom he loves and in whom he is well pleased. Immediately, the Spirit leads Jesus out for scene number three, where he's tempted in the wilderness. <clears throat> and then scene four closes out with John being imprisoned and so Jesus now begins this public declaration that the kingdom of God is here and that the gospel is available to all who will receive it. So let's go back to verse 1 and notice that Mark tells us what the book is going to be about. He says, the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Right away, Mark proclaims that this is about the good news, the gospel which is about Jesus. And it gives us two descriptions or two titles that refer to Jesus. The first one is the Messiah. He is the rescuer of Israel, who is to establish God's rule on earth. As Tim Keller says in his book about the book of Mark, Jesus isn't just a king, but he is the king. And as the king, he is not only the Messiah, he is the son of God, Mark tells us. Not just a man, but the God-man. Jesus is not just a historical figure, but he's a real person with significance for us today. God stepped into history in the person of Jesus, and that changes everything. You see, the gospel is good news. It's an announcement of a message. And that message is that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, who has already done the work of securing our salvation. The message isn't that we need to do something to rescue ourselves. Our response is to receive the gift provided by Jesus and in Jesus and through Jesus. And our response is simply to be to repent of our sins and to believe in him. As you invite God into your day, I encourage you to ask yourself if you've ever responded to Jesus' offer of salvation. If you haven't acted decisively to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is imploring you today. Your prayer can be as simple as, God, I believe Jesus is God's son. I know I'm unworthy and I cannot rescue myself. Please forgive me for the things I've done. 
and save me. If you have already accepted Jesus' offer of rescue, spend some time at the wonder, thinking, wondering about that offer and thanking God for how he's already saved you, not based on what you did, but based on what Jesus did. All right, I hope that's encouraging to you today. God bless you.